How y'all doing, brother? All right, at ease, at ease. As y'all saw, we showed that amongst the black community, we can have order. What the officer was just teaching y'all was, we've been lied to. I don't know if y'all realize, in, in, in the Christian church, they've not taught us who we are. In the Christian church, they allow you to call yourself African American. They allow you to continue to do things that nothing that, that has nothing to do with this Bible. Question for all four of y'all men right here. Hey, excuse me. Question for all four of y'all. Do y'all love God? Oh, yeah. You love God, right? You love God? You love God. Now, watch this. How do you love God? I love Him deep in the heart. You love Him from your heart? Deep from the heart, from the soul. How do you love God? Do you know what God says about your heart? Give me that, um... Uh, you got Let me show you what God says about our heart. What you just quoted was what we are taught in the Christian church. They teach you little quotes that'll get you by. Make you think you got a relationship with God. But I'm going to show you according to this Bible, none of y'all don't even know God. And it's not an insult. It's just that we've never been taught. So watch this. Read that. Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 9. The heart is deceitful above all things. Hold up. No, I didn't just say that. Read that again. The heart. It's deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. What did the Bible just say about your heart? It's deceitful and desperately wicked. Now, I'm going to ask that question again. How do you love God? Love is an action word. So you've been living your life all these years doing the opposite of loving God if you don't know how to love God. You, you can't fix a car if you don't know how to fix a car. You understand that? You can't mistakenly fix a car. You understand that? So how do you love God? I'm going to show you. Give me that. 1 John chapter 5 and verse 3. You know? For this is the love of God. So what is he finna read right now? The love of God. See how simple that is? Read it again. For this is the love of God. So if y'all been a part of the Christian church for all these years and this scripture is this simple, why don't you know it? Why don't you know that they're not going to teach you? You've been taught tradition your whole life. Read it. That we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not grievous. Did you ever know that? The love of God or loving God is keeping his commandments and not complaining about doing them. But the Christian church tell you, oh, if you love God, you make sure you pay your tithe. Make sure when that offering come around, you, you put a blessing in there, you're going to get blessed ten times. That ain't loving God. Right. Loving God is keeping God's commandments. You understand that? Give me John chapter 14, verse 15. We're going to hear from Christ's mouth himself. This is showing you everything you've been learning in these Christian churches ain't got nothing to do with this Bible. Right. Read that. John chapter 14 and verse 15. If ye love me. So this Christ talking. He said, if you love me, what you think he's going to say? Keep my commandments. How many times do the Bible got to repeat something for us to realize we've been lied to? God said if we love him, keep his commandments. So, the question is, I'm going to ask you again. Do you love God? Oh, yeah, I love him. You want to First John chapter 2, verse 3. I'm going to show you that. So, if I give you a commandment that God gave us and you realize you're not following it, would you change? No, I wouldn't. I would let say Thanks, Watch this. He wants you to keep your word and say it the right way and stay focused. Please. Watch and this. First John chapter 2 and verse 3. And hereby we do know that we know him. The Bible is going to tell you how you know that you know God. This is how you know that you know him. Read. If we keep his commandments. See how I keep repeating itself? God is making it for, he, he giving you how to love me for dummies. He's telling you, it's simple to love me. Keep my commandments. Read. He that said. I know him, and keeping not his commandments is a liar. So how could you love him if you don't even know him? It's a whoever say, I know God, and don't keep his commandments is a what? Is a liar. Did the Bible lie to you? So what is that saying about what we thought was loving God? It's a lie. We don't know God. So the question is, do you want to know God? Okay, well, we're going to see if y'all really want to know God. Give me 1 Corinthians 11 and 3. We're going to see if y'all really love God because loving God is doing his commandments. If, if you find out you're breaking the commandment, changing and saying, okay, let me change. Because we haven't been taught how to love God our whole lives. You might want to tell you right that they need to learn how to love God as well because would you be okay with going the rest of your life knowing that you had the opportunity to learn what you didn't know and you walked away from it? How old are you? 
You're 20 and you have not learned how to love God. And you had the opportunity to learn how to love God. Right now, you'll walk away from that. Understood? You might want to tell them to come to, but I understand if you got to go. If you got to go, our information is on the back of that flyer. We have school every Saturday at 3. Now watch this. Read that. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. Y'all hear this? It's, it's, it's giving you something. It's giving you the order that everything God deals with is order. What we've been learning in the Christian church is complete disorder. That's why the black household is messed up. That's why we lead in single parent households. That's why we lead in all this horrendous stuff dealing with our families. God gives us order, but we never follow the read. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. So he's giving you the order of the household. The head of every man is Christ. Read. And the head of the woman is the man. And the head of the woman is who? So it shouldn't be a woman running the household, should it? Okay, read. And the head of Christ is God. So the order is God, Christ, man, woman. Read. Verse 4. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered. So praying, or if you're ever praying or you're prophesying, which is reading this Bible, and you have your head covered, read. This honoreth his head. Who is our head? Oh. Read it again. Verse 3. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. Who is our head? Okay, so it says if you're praying or reading the Bible with your head covered, you dishonored your head. Who are you dishonoring? Are you okay with that? So what should you do? That's yeah, repentance. Bro. That's how simple repentance is. Finding out you're in sin and changing it. Right. Now, like I said, if you, I know you got to go. If, if you're really interested in learning more, we have school every Saturday at 3. Did you know that the Saturdays are, are the Sabbaths of God? That, that we're supposed to be so, honoring God on the Saturdays? You thought it was, can I show you? Can they hold up so you can learn? So you can learn that you've been learning the wrong way? Give me that exit. Bring it on. Exodus, chapter 20 and verse 8. Remember the Sabbath. Uh, you love God? If, if, if we read the Bible and it says that if you you um, have your head covered, you dishonor Christ, what should you do? Huh? So what, what should you do to not dishonor Christ? Yes, it says if your head is covered while the Bible is being read, you're dishonoring Christ. All praises. Now, check this out. Exodus, chapter 20 and verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day. Remember which day? The Sabbath day. To keep it holy. To keep it holy means to keep it separate. That's what holy means. The Christian church tell you holy means some other stuff, but holy means separate according to the Bible. Read. Six days shall thy labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day. But the what day? But the seventh day. Which day did he just say? The seventh day. On any calendar you look at, what's the seventh day? The seventh day? You, you got your phone on? Look at your phone right now and tell me what day is the seventh. Bring it on. Let, let's see. On any calendar you look at, every day, every calendar will tell you what's the first day or will tell you what's the seventh day. Right. And we read this scripture and not realize that we're doing the opposite of what this Bible is saying. This is what I'm telling you. Everything you thought you knew is a lie. You've been learning tradition as opposed to what the Word of God says. That's right. You got your calendar? Okay, what's the seventh day? See, now watch this. Two quick precepts, Daniel 7, 25. All right, what he's bringing out is, is actually heavy because we don't even realize that we think how they want us to think. When if, if, if you actually look at the calendar, it's like, hold on, wait a minute. Sunday's the first day and Saturday's the seventh day. Why would I say that? This is why. I'm going to show you. Watch this. Daniel chapter 7 and verse 25. Come on. And he shall speak great words against the Most High. When it says he is talking about our enemy, it's talking about that white image of so-called Jesus Christ in front of you. It says he, our conquerors, all right, our oppressors, read. And shall wear out the saints of the Most High. So when he said he would speak great words against God, meaning what? He would exalt himself as God. Then when it says he would wear out the saints, we are the saints of God. Those who made a covenant with God by sacrifice. Who's that talking about? The Israelites, you so-called blacks and Hispanics. All right, read on. And think to change times. And this man, this white man, this oppressor, would do what? 
and think to change time, he will change times, read, and law to the point where if we ask you what the seventh day of the week is, what do he say? Sunday, you would say Sunday, because that's what they told you. Do you get that? Now, give me Colossians 2 8 real quick. Come on, Colossians 2 8. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Last scripture, then I'm going to let you talk with a brother, then I know you got to go, right? All right, watch this. Colossians. Two of it. Colossians, chapter 2 and verse 8. Beware, lest any man spoil you. So Paul is telling us, be aware, lest any man spoil you. Spoiling means to deceive you or trick you. Read it again. Beware. Let any man spoil you. Come on. Through philosophy. Through philosophy. Even though we all know Sunday the first day of the week, but they have told us what? That, that that's the Sabbath. You understand? Read. In vain deceit. In vain deceit. They have lied to you. Read. After the tradition of men. After the traditions of men, what man? What man is it? Yes, our enemy. Who is that? There you go. That's, I'm telling you, you'd be like, hold on, is it really saying? Yes, it's really saying that. Read it up that part again. After the tradition of man, and what? After the rudiments of the world, of this world, come on, and not after Christ. And not after who? And not after Christ. Because Christ kept the seventh day Sabbath. You understand? He didn't keep it on Sunday, like the Christian church tells you. It's very important, my brother. I know you got to go, all right? Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.